This is a model of a Whipple shield. Whipple shields are used to help protect some spacecraft from impacts by space debris, because even something as small as a fleck of paint can do a lot of damage when it's traveling thousands of miles per hour. The basic idea behind a Whipple shield, like the one pictured here, is not to always completely stop debris. It's to break the debris up into smaller pieces and spread the impact over a larger area so it doesn't puncture the outer wall of a spacecraft. This doesn't necessarily help protect against large debris, but it does help with smaller pieces of debris that are too small to track. In the rest of this video, I'll show you how you can make your own model Whipple shield and use it for a science project. Here's what you'll need for your Whipple shield experiment. All of this information is also available in the written instructions on our website linked in the description of this video. You will need at least 10 plywood squares. The exact size of the squares doesn't matter, but something in the range of 6 to 12 inches per side should work well. What matters and what's important is that these squares are smooth and flat. You don't want them to be warped because as you'll see, we're going to use these to make a sandwich of plywood and aluminum foil, and you want the aluminum foil to be clamped very evenly along the edges. If the wood is warped, then you're gonna have uneven pressure and it's not gonna hold the aluminum foil in place evenly on both sides. So take three of your squares, use one as a spacer just to get started between the other two, lay them out like this, then you can remove the middle square and place a piece of aluminum foil that you've cut to the same width as your squares, but longer than the squares so that you have some overlap on each side so that when you put another piece of plywood on top, it's gonna to help clamp that down and hold the aluminum foil in place. So now we're just going to stack these up to make a sandwich, making sure that the edges of the plywood sheets are aligned for as many layers as you would like to test for your experiment. If you want to test four layers of aluminum foil shielding to start, for example, then you are going to need 10 pieces of plywood. So just keep going, make sure everything stays aligned. There's my second layer. Third layer, when you put each layer on, make sure you pull it tight. Don't let the aluminum foil start out sagging down like that. So I'm making sure it's pulled tight. Here's my third layer. And then I'm going to add my fourth layer and I am almost ready to test, except the wood itself is potentially not going to be heavy enough to hold the aluminum foil in place if I drop something on it. You don't want everything to just be pushed down and have the aluminum foil be pulled out and slide out from in between the layers of wood. So to do that, we are gonna add some heavy weights to the top of each stack of the plywood. You could use something like dumbbells, large rocks, anything really heavy you have around that is gonna be heavy enough to clamp down and hold the aluminum foil in place. So in this case, I have two 30 pound dumbbells. I'm gonna grab these from off camera place them carefully on top of the plywood, and now that is definitely not going to slide out. The aluminum foil is going to break before it gets pulled out from between the pieces of wood. You're also going to need an object to drop. Something like a marble, ball bearing, or a small rock is a good way to get started. Now these aren't going to break apart on impact like real space debris because they're not traveling thousands of miles per hour, but they're still a good way to demonstrate the concept and do an experiment with a Whipple shield. You could also try out something that might break apart on impact, like clumps of dirt, sand, or clay. I can start out by dropping the marble from a fairly low height, for example 10 centimeters, then inspecting the shield for damage and replacing any damaged layers. In this case, it didn't even punch through the first layer, but I have a little dent in the top, so I would want to replace the top sheet just because damage can accumulate over successive drops. After conducting three more trials from the same height, replacing the top sheet each time, I could move on to a higher height. And I can see that that time the marble did punch right through the first layer and was stopped by the second layer. So I could record this information in a data table, again repeating multiple trials at each height before moving up to the next height and replacing any damaged or punctured sheets in between each trial. There are many other variables you could test.
like the spacing between layers of the shield, their length and width, the material you use, and the type of object you drop, its size or shape. For over a thousand other projects in all areas of science and engineering, visit our website, www.sciencebuddies.org.